Good morning everyone, it's Tess and today's tip 380 and I'm calling it shifting focus. And I, it seems like this comes up over and over, but I think it is that thing that we all battle um, and it comes up in group every week. It comes in a Doc V's challenge all the time. It comes up in like the, the work with Chris Noggle. It comes up in the law of attraction. It just keeps coming up that the obstacle that we all face is ourselves and we, it doesn't matter what label we put on it. It's self-work that's going to help us to get to the next step. That's going to help us to overcome our demons, so to speak. Um, good morning, whoever's on with me. I appreciate you. Uh, so th today I just decided there was, uh, I woke up thinking about this and I pulled an article and I found a page in my um, uh Manifest Your Destiny thing, uh, journal from Abraham Hicks. And really, I found the article and it was uh, from Very Well Mind and it was written by Elizabeth Scott, PhD. And it was about shifting your focus. And for me, what I'm finally learning is that the, the words I use, the self-talk that I use, well, hi, Miss Lori, good to see you. Oh, well, yep, drive safely, that's most important. Um, but I realize that uh, it is our talk, it is our self-talk, and I hear it in group, I hear it in Doc V's, I hear it in Chris's. Everyone, everyone is comfortable in that place that they know, but the place that they know isn't the place they want to be. And that means that we have to shift our focus. We have to get that drive and that commitment that it doesn't matter if we we're going to walk over it, walk through it, walk under it, walk around it, but that nothing will stop us. And the first place where we have to stop is our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings. And by that, I mean that it's really hard to overcome. It's hard to overcome that idea. Well, hi, Nicole. Good to see you. It's, it's so hard to overcome that idea that I don't like water if you keep telling yourself I don't like water. Dr. V talks about that all the time. Our bodies are 80% water. Why can't we connect um, that, you know, drinking water can feel good? And if I want to drink water, and this is law of attraction too, if I want to drink water, I just have to think that I want to drink water and it will be a pleasurable thing for me. But if I don't find it to be pleasurable, I'm not ever going to want to do it. We do have to want to enjoy what we're doing. And it is that self-talk. Like, I remember thinking that I hated fruits and vegetables. And I'm going to tell you, since I've been gardening and creating my own salsas and playing with them every year to make them more fun and growing sunflowers with the girls next door because we have a goal to make the sunflower taller than the house. And we got pretty close last year. There's fun to it. So I think that if you shift your focus and find a way to make it fun, it will be more of an enjoyable journey. Now this, because this article, uh, uh, shifting your focus to relieve stress was written by a PhD. She has some, some pointers. And again, I'm going to say it really truly falls back to feeling good and being happy and being hopeful in the decisions that you're making. Cause that will just, it will, it will send you so much farther down the road faster if you start to look inside you and figure out why why you have the negative feelings that are blocking you. Because it really is a, the case of if we think that we're not going to like something, then we're not going to like it and we may as well stop fighting it. But if we start to slowly learn to love something or slowly learn to like something is probably the better word for it slowly learn to like something if we want to change something in our lives that's where the difference comes from it it life is so much more fun living it in a place from feeling good and her pointers in this article were and again, she was scientific, so cognitive restructuring, shifting our natural tendency to distort things in our mind to the worst case scenarios. And I think that does kind of fall in line in this time, in this day and age. A lot of people are falling into that place where um, instead of looking for the, the, the silver lining, we're always looking for the obstacle that we think is blocked our road again. And I, I find my life is so much better now. I, I we're going back into the office very soon and I, I know that it's going to be very different for me because I am no longer looking for what is going wrong. I'm looking for what's going right. And if something doesn't feel right to me, I'm going to take steps to make it right and then make the decisions moving forward to always feel good because I don't think it has to, I know it doesn't have to feel bad. And I looked for too long in a place of feeling bad. So her first thing is what she called cognitive restructuring, which is simply shifting your natural tendency to go to the worst place scenario. Um, Cause life doesn't have to be bad and we have to stop always focusing on feeling bad. 
Uh, the next one is turn a bad day around. I'm going to say that's been a big one for me the past couple of years. And for me to turn a day around, it's meditation. It's pre-paving, which is Zara Mahoon and Unlimited. And that's where we do a lot of um, uh, I am unlimited. All things are working out for me. Um, I love life. I enjoy life. And there's a, there's a bunch of them, but of course, off the top of my head, I'm not remembering them, but all things are possible. I want an ease and flow day. I want harmony in all conversations. It may sound simple, and I guess really it is simple, but if we start keep reminding ourselves with those kind of statements, just a simple quick line statement, it reminds you to pull yourself back to what she's calling a number one, cognitive restructuring, pulling your stuff back to a place of feeling good because it's okay to want to feel good. I think it's our all of our natural tendency and it just makes life easier to live. The third one she came up with was enhance your optimism. And um, she said, say more positive things than negative, which is kind of really in line with the previous two statements she said. And I think a lot of that can go back to just holding those simple statements in your hand. And you don't have to have hundreds of them, but just a couple of them. I want ease and flow. If I'm going to have meetings at work, I'll say I want harmony in all conversations. I want the meeting to end with them being satisfied and happy with what we accomplished and me feeling good and proud of what I was able to produce. And I want ease and flow. I want harmony. I just kind of go simple like that and it helps me to feel good. The next one that she says, and again, all of these are like tools, but this is how she labeled them in her article, is gratitude journaling. And I love gratitude journaling and saying thank you. I appreciate. And Gratitude journaling and appreciation journaling, that is almost like these same tools to shift your focus. Um, it feels good to me. I appreciate when I walk and I see the bunnies in the morning. I appreciate a beautiful sunrise and a beautiful sunset. And it is true what they say. Now that I know they make me feel good, I don't know if it's just instinctively the clock, but I instinctively know and look outside and find a beautiful sunrise or beautiful sunset. You can look online and it'll tell you what time they are. And seeing those just feels good. So find those things that make you feel good. Maybe for you, it's not bunnies. Maybe for you, it's um, the snow or maybe it's an animal. My animals humor me a lot too. Um, I walk in my basement because one of my things I want to do these days is 15,000 steps. Well, I was in the basement walking and I'm like, I am being followed. I know I'm being followed. And I turn around and look and one of my two cats is walking right behind me. <laughs> and it was just cute and it was fun and I enjoyed it. And I will enjoy that because it was just... It was funny. I actually took pictures yesterday and put them online because she followed me all the way around my little figure eight I was doing in the basement. But I thought this was interesting because it's all the same stuff that we all know. Good morning. It's so good to see you, Letitia. Good to see you. But I think it's so important just to shift your focus. And that is law of attraction. Oh, Nicole, thank you so much. But that is law of attraction. It's changing the thoughts that you have. And she itemizes it in four things in her article because she's scientific and she uses that um, cognitive restructuring. And I'll be honest, I like the scientific part of it um, because honestly, no matter where you go look, whether you look in science, no matter what religion you look in, no matter where you head, we all head to the same place. And when we head to that same place, we feel good. Oh, thank you. Um, here's Lori. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you, Lori. That means so much to me. It really means a lot to me. But I, that's what I think is that shift, that simple shift in feeling good. No, no matter where you go, no matter whether you're reading a book about self-help, uh, building a book about um, science, whether you're uh, looking at, you know, your church, no matter where you're looking at, you know that it is about trying to feel good. And I found for me the past two years, these techniques have helped a lot. And that pre-paving that Sarah Mahoon introduced to me, and it's just simply saying a statement. I want ease and flow in my day. Um, all things are possible. I want harmony in conversations. Um, I want to feel good. Or I am learning to feel good. I am learning to be happy. Well, hi, you Pender. I haven't seen you lately, too. Um, I can't, I do have a few on, I can't see all the names, but hello and thank you for being here. But if you, if you are struggling, I would really say, try to find a couple of statements, gratitude journal, thankfulness journal. And what I found interesting is Matthew McConaughey posted something about how important journaling is to him. And it's just simply about putting some thoughts on paper and finding something to be happy about, finding something to be grateful about, finding something to appreciate. And I, I promise you that 
it will make you feel better. It makes me feel better. I can say that I'm coming out of the past two years building stronger relationships with people that mean a lot to me. And I didn't know it could be different, and it is very different. I'm learning to focus on the things that matter, which are in a very positive way. And as I get ready to end this, I'll repeat the four things that this woman said. Again, she is a, um, a PhD, and it was very well mined. And she was saying cognitive restructuring, which is just finding the tools to help you shift to a place of feeling good. And that is really meditate, pre-paving, which are just those statements. I am learning to be happy. Um, or I am happy. I am learning to love. Uh, I, I, I am affirmations help me sometimes. Sometimes it's a walk in nature. Sometimes it's watching a sunrise or a sunset. Sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's building a puzzle. For me, sometimes it's finding a four-leaf clover because that takes me back to the days with my grandmother when I was a child. Uh, sometimes it's a reading a book. Um, but look for those ways to feel good. And this I thought was interesting. This is, again, the Manifest Your Destiny, Abraham Hicks. This is her, their scale to kind of help you think about when you're in a place where you don't feel good. This is where she, she kind of starts. Remember that you're low on the emotional scale or you're low in the mood area when you're having feelings of fear and grief, depression, despair, powerlessness. That's a place we don't want to be. So by using affirmations, by using meditation, by using appreciation, by using prayer, you can start to realize that there are some good things in life to make you feel good. And then we can go up the scale from fear um, to insecurity and guilt, jealousy and hatred, anger, discouragement, blame and we get to worry and then we start going there's some doubt maybe some disappointment some overwhelm but what we're shooting for is we want to start to get to that point where we have contentment where we have hopefulness where we have optimism where we have positive expectations and belief where we are enthusiastic eager happy we're full of passion and we have joy knowledge empowerment freedom and love and I hope you find something useful in this today. Remember, we are the first line of defense of changing how we feel inside. And it is simply a shift of what we're saying. Instead of saying it's going to be a bad day, say, you know, no matter what obstacle I face today, I'll find a way around it. And Sarah talks about that all the time too. She, she, she refers to herself, she refers to herself as lazy, but it's never lazy. That woman has been so smart and taught me so much in the past year too. Her and Doc V and, and Zara, this was so funny. She said one day, um, I was just lazy. I wasn't going to have to climb this really high wall. If I had to, I was just going to walk around it. And I think that's what we all need to do with those bad days. Figure out a way to walk around them. Meditate, journal, prepave, say something positive. Step by step, comfort and soothe ourselves so that we get to that place of feeling better. It's amazing when you learn that you can choose to feel better. And uh, reach out to me anytime because I would love to see this world feel better every single day. Thank you and have a beautiful day.